The Billy Sunday Legacy Billy Sunday's altar call was a radical departure from previous evangelists. During the 39 years of Billy Sunday's ministry, the big lie of 100% salvation was gradually accepted and became the norm. This forced concerned ministers like Oswald Chambers, best known for the book My Utmost for His Highest, to make a distinction between the Billy Sunday type of convert and someone who was truly born again. He said, when a man fails in personal Christian experience, fails in personal Christian experience, it is nearly always that he has never really received anything. When a man is born again, he knows it is because he has received something as a gift from Almighty God and not because of his own decision. People register their vows and sign their pledges and determine to go through, but none of this is salvation. In the 1930s, Dawson Trotman started the Navigators to combat Sunday conversions. He taught his Navigators, you can lead a man to Christ in a couple of minutes to a couple of hours, but it takes 20 weeks to a couple of years to adequately follow him up. Trotman repented of having led so many into superficial commitments before starting the Navigators. The hit-and-run evangelism he and others had practiced for years, resulting only in the survival of the fittest, he now condemned as dead wrong. The Dawson Trotman Billy Graham Connection When Billy Graham started his ministry in the 1940s, he recognized the problems caused by Billy Sunday evangelism. He brought back the inquiry room and started an extensive follow-up program. Graham saw mass evangelism as a platform for individual one-on-one -on -one ministry. Graham asked Dawson Trotman to use his Navigator's experience to improve the inquiry room and follow-up programs. He told Trotman, getting decisions is 5% of the work. Following through on the decisions is 95%. There is no such thing as mass evangelism. We bring people under the sound of the gospel and to a place of decision. The real evangelism takes place in the inquiry room. Like Dawson Trotman, Graham took measures to compensate for the fundamental flaw of Sunday evangelism. Even with the 20th century handicap of having to treat everyone who came forward as a convert, Graham fashioned a formula for success. His three-prong approach of excellent sermons, altar counseling, and intensive follow-up by counselors and churches provided seekers with numerous opportunities to hear the gospel and repent, resulting in, according to Graham, a possible 25% success rate. The Billy Graham Formula S plus C plus F equals D times 0.25 equals B, which means sermons plus counseling plus follow-up equals decisions times 25% equals born-again experiences. Although this seems like an improvement over the 5 to 10% success rate common in the 1800s, it is roughly equivalent when one considers the Graham Seeker has numerous exposures to the gospel and personal counseling, equivalent to an 1800 seeker attending an after meeting and then a minister visiting him at home until God deigned to save him. Billy Graham's three-part formula proves most effective when all three parts are faithfully used. According to Kel Richards, National Coordinator for Billy Graham Evangelism Association Australia, only 2% of conversions take place during the sermon, 48% during counseling, and 50% sometime during follow-up. When the previously cited 25% salvation rate is applied to these statistics, Graham's formula for success looks even better. If only a sermon is provided, just one half of 1% of decisions will be effective. If a sermon plus altar counseling is provided, 12.5% of decisions will be effective. If a sermon plus altar counseling plus follow-up is provided, 25% of decisions for Christ will be effective. Graham created the three-part formula because he knew, without counseling and follow-up, the vast majority of decisions for Christ would be ineffective. Every pastor and evangelist needs to listen to Billy Graham. He said, I don't believe any man can come to Christ unless the Holy Spirit has prepared his heart. Second, 
I don't believe any man can come to Christ unless God draws him. My job is to proclaim the message. It's the Holy Spirit's job to do the work. And so, I approach it with a great deal of relaxation now. There's the moment of conception, there's nine months of gestation, there's birth. Now, I believe that these people who come forward in our meetings to make a commitment, for some, it's a moment of conception. For others, it's another stage in gestation. For others, it is birth into the kingdom of God. And for many, it's completely spurious, and there's nothing to it.